Welcome back. So we covered everything you needed to know in the last couple videos on how to get set up correctly with the Bechtel Fusion team. Um, in this tutorial and the next few tutorials, I'm going to cover the basics of CAD design. Fusion is a pretty popular CAD environment, especially amongst beginners. So there's a wealth of resources online. So you don't need to follow this tutorial, but this is the just bare bones what you need to do CAD design in Fusion. Now, if you are someone who's importing files from other CAD environments, that this might not be as relevant and you should skip ahead to a dedicated video for that. But keep in mind that a lot of the CAM requires that you actually interact with the CAD. So maybe watching this CAD uh, tutorial is going to be useful for you. So the first thing I'm going to cover is uh, the basic layout of Fusion and as well as sketches. So we already talked about the data panel. Data panel is a way of exploring projects, switching between teams, seeing your files. So I have a project called Anirudh and I'm going to create a new folder under there called um, training video training video and I do recommend that you organize your work using folders and subfolders so I have my folder there and now I have this open tab so you see on the top right we have tabs a couple of icons here and a couple of icons here these usually control the active tab these set preferences for the entire client if you had multiple tabs of designs they would open up as if it's a browser so it's quite natural and easy to understand then what we have is the ribbon the ribbon has sub tabs as well which reveal uh, different tools based on which in uh, which uh, tab you select and then you have drop downs as well what you'll see are here will be the most commonly used uh, tools and the ribbon adapts to the context of what you're doing so if you're doing something special the ribbon is supposed to switch automatically to the context of that uh, below that we have our workspace setting area where we can set different workspaces for the most part in the Bechtel Innovation Design Center you'll be working with designs you'll sometimes work with generative design especially if you're doing additive work in our printing and prototyping lab you will also sometimes work with simulations if you're working on something a bit more complex you will work a lot with the manufacture environment if you're outside of the if you're in the metal shop and you might occasionally work with drawing if you're doing work like fabrication or manual machining below that we have the timeline so here you can see all the features you add in sequence. Above that we have controls for how the view looks. On the right side we have our view cube which allows us to orbit easily. Here we have the browser so as you add features they'll get nested into their respective folders and subfolders. So the first one's going to be simple. We're going to start with sketches. So I'm going to save this file first and I'm going to call this sketch and I'm only going to cover the very basics. So I create a sketch on a plane. So I'm going for the XY plane and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Okay, here I want you to notice something. What I want you to notice is this section is black and this section is black, but this section here is blue. The reason these two sections are blue is because they're not constrained. Constrained is the concept of defining geometric relationships that lock the position of a given geometry. It's a little complicated, so let me explain. Let me start by constraining this. So I know it can expand this way, and I know it can expand this way. So I know that it's lacking dimension constraint. So what I can do is I can come and click on sketch dimension define this to be two inches and then define this to be three inches and now you see that this is completely black 
and the reason these lines are completely black is because they are fully constrained. Let me start that from the top again. Let's say you have a couple of lines. Let's start with this line. The first thing you'll notice about this line is it's not constrained at all. So what I do is I do a coincident constraint between this point and the origin. So now what you'll see is this line can go everywhere but I can't move this point because I see that there is a coincident constraint there. The next thing I can do is make the line horizontal. So I'll go with, I'll set it like that, make it horizontal, select the line, horizontal, and now the line is black but this dot is still white. As you can see that it can grow and shrink. So now I can apply a dimension like that, let's say 5 inches, and now this dot also turns black. So now this is a fully constrained sketch. A feature and both a downside of Fusion is it'll try to auto constrain things for you. So when you try to use a rectangle and you type in 3 and 5, it has applied a bunch of constraints. If you click here, you can see there's a coincident constraint. There's a coincident constraint here, here, and you'll see two here. One is joining the line of this point to the line of that point, and the other is joining the point to the origin. You also see horizontal and vertical constraints, and you see dimensional constraints. You can manipulate constraints in many interesting ways. So let me delete this one and this one. So by doing that, I can now angle these however I like. Can you guys see that? But I can also apply new constraints like uh, parallel. So let's go with parallel between this line and this line. And now this is not fully constrained but still able to move like that because it is parallel but I have not specified a angle between this line and this line so what I can do is set that to perpendicular this one and this one and now suddenly none of it can move all of it is fully constrained now there are many different sketch options and if you hover over them like for example if I hover over line it'll give me a description and I can press a key combination to get a more in-depth description if I want to let me try that and go to line click a tool in fusion and see help tip step by step or discover new concepts in the my learning tab so there's a learning panel right here and you can interact with it and increase your knowledge uh, so the key things to keep in mind all your sketch geometries are here modifications to sketch geometry can be made here and your constraints are located here there's an important tool under inspect called measure that can allow you to measure things so if I click on this line I can see that the measurement is 5 inches exactly as it's specified here so that's pretty much everything you need to know about sketches I'll give you a few more pointers so one key thing is make sure your sketches are fully constrained whenever you create a sketch you'll see an, an entry on the timeline showing that you made the sketch and under the sketches folder you will see a new sketch because you just created a sketch you can also create newer sketches I'm just gonna save an empty sketch and you can see one there I'm going to create another sketch and save it and you can see that we now have three sketches under this sketches tab and three sketches on the timeline. That's it for this session. I'll see you guys on the next one.